getting things done, it's not, it's not good. Just like saying, Hey, do this, go do this, go do this, go do this. Because really you, 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 you don't want to be thinking for people, right? You want to empower them. You want to give them ownership. You want to give them autonomy. You want to give them accountability. Hello, and welcome to the Life Hack Show, a series of interviews with exciting people who have built successful careers and businesses by taking action and getting more out of each day. Very much what we believe here at Life Hack. My name is Carl Pauline, and I'm your host for this show. Today's guest is Nathan Chan, founder and CEO of Founder. Nathan has a passion for entrepreneurship and people, which is why he created Founder, a global media and education company that produces magazines, books, and online courses for entrepreneurs. Nathan believes life is too short to do work you hate, something I completely agree with, and is on a mission to grow Founder into a household name that impacts tens of millions of people with its content and online business school. Thank you, Nathan, for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me, Carl. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, it's uh, no, it's a pleasure for me to be talking to you today. <laughs> so let's get, start off with the first question. Could you just tell us how Founder came about and how you started it? Yeah. So um, pretty much, I uh, I I wanted to find a job in marketing, and what I found was that it was hard to get a job if you didn't have any skills or experience, and so. I started this this magazine uh, on the side uh, as a passion project, a little side hustle hobby, uh, and it, I started interviewing people around how they started their business. And the reason that I did it around entrepreneurship, and I did a magazine around entrepreneurship, and I knew nothing about design, editorial, business, publishing whatsoever, was because I started to hear these stories of friends of friends starting online businesses with no skills or experience whatsoever and being like, how the hell are they doing this? Just genuinely want to know how the hell they were doing this. And, and they're starting these online businesses and getting crazy success with, with no skills or experience whatsoever using this thing called the internet. And when I started to do these interviews for the magazine, what I discovered was that this content this information was so awesome there was so much gold that i had to share it with the world and that's how i basically started founder and that's kind of been the journey ever since carl like mm -hmm. we interview some of the greatest entrepreneurs of our generation and now a big focus as we transition really into an ed tech business is we get some of the you know successful uh, most smartest successful founders that have incredible experiences and in all sorts of different topics and problems that founders need to solve and we get them to teach and give back on our platform in some way shape or form and uh yeah that's uh that's kind of us in a nutshell excellent so i remember i, re I was watching an interview with you previously where you mentioned that founder kind of started as your side hustle so you were still working a full-time job so Correct. This is a problem I see a lot of people who want to start uh, their own businesses. They obviously have, or most of them have a full-time job right now. And the difficulty is the time management side of doing your full-time job Monday to Friday, and then doing your side hustle and trying to grow that at the same time. What did you learn about managing your time during that process where you started founder and was still working a full-time job? So this is a really good question because I never forget um, when I started doing the magazine, it took me like, honestly, four to five months to, to publish the first edition. Mm -hmm. And when I published the first edition, I made $5.50 and I had two subscribers. Mm -hmm. And the scary thing about that was like, okay, well, if I'm selling a monthly subscription, like I need to work on the next edition and I haven't even started <laughs> and I've got a month to make it happen. Yeah. So what I what I started to do was what my time looked like was was actually um, very simple. I'd get up early in the morning and before I started my day job, I would uh, go, you know, get up at six in the morning, go through emails, et cetera, et cetera. I might start at like a nine o'clock and then I might do an interview in the morning. So I'd take my road mic and my cable arm and I'd basically uh, go into off, go into the office early and find uh, a meeting room and do an interview or two in the morning, mm -hmm. then I'd go to my actual job, like, mm -hmm. and I'd start at nine. I might do interviews during my lunch break as well. I'd interview people. And then I'd finish up. I'd be home, you know, 6, 7 p.m. I'd have dinner. I might see my now fiance and uh, I might see her from, you know, 
let's say 9, 10 p.m. onwards. So I had a bit of a gap between that 7.30 to 9 p.m. where I could bang out a couple of hours more work. So you'd say that I'd probably be uh, working, yeah, a couple of hours in the morning, a couple of hours at night. If I wasn't going to see my fiance or I had something on, I might work until 1 or 2 a.m. and then wake up at 7 or 6 and do it all again. <laughs> and uh, that was how I was managing my time. And then weekends, Basically, any spare time that I had, I'd be working on the business if, if nothing was locked in. So one thing that was really important to me and still is, is like, if I want to catch up with a friend, a friend wants to catch up with me, I never don't do it because of work. I might just schedule it two weeks in advance. And right. so I never say no to anything. And like, I have a, a, a pretty um, predictable routine. You know, I see my, my family every Sunday. I don't work Saturday. Um, I do a little bit of work Sunday night, uh, Sunday night before seeing my family. I see my family on Wednesday night. Um, you know, I catch up with my brother on Sunday when we go for a bike ride. Like I have a fairly predictable routine, but I never, ever not live my life. So right. anything that's not scheduled, I'd probably be doing work. And that's right. kind of how things work now. And it's a uh, fairly, fairly disciplined car, but uh, it works. It, yeah, it does. I mean, I've, I've pretty much similar to you. In, in that, it's right. If there's nothing on my calendar, if my wife is busy, I'll work. And it's, it's not because I have to. It's actually because of the love of what I'm doing that just says, yeah. I've got a choice. I can sit and watch Netflix or I can go and read something, learn something you know, it'll help my business. I know what I'm going to choose. It's just become a habit now. Uh, so I, I know what you mean at that point. Now, I also uh, saw that you you were doing the your full-time job and then this side hustle founder. Uh, you made the decision to quit the career in the full-time job to go all in with founder. What did you learn in those first six months about risk? Yeah, so um, it took me 12, about 12, 14 months before I went full time on founder. And there's a few key things to take away that allowed me to manage and mitigate the risk. One was it was a subscription business. So I had somewhat predictability with the recurring revenue coming in. So I could kind of manage the costs. Mm -hmm. The second thing was I made sure I had at least six months of savings in terms of living expenses, mm -hmm. I made sure my living expenses were incredibly low as well. And then one of my mentors told me something fascinating where basically he really challenged me because I said I was going to leave my job. And then I kept thinking about delaying it because I was like, I could spend money on doing this on the business, this on the business. And what he said to me was, Nathan, if you actually probably do the math, you're probably spending what, 15, 20 hours a week on founder. And I said, yeah, that's about right. And maybe a bit more. And yeah, I'd say I'd be spending three, four hours a day times that by 20. So for so seven, so you get, you know, 20. Yeah. Yeah. You say, you say 21 to 25 hours, right? Mm -hmm. And he said, Nathan, what if you were working 50, 60 hours in founder? What do you think your income could be? He's like, that's what you need to think about because it's actually an opportunity cost now you working in your day job. And he was 100% right. And that's what allowed me to kind of look at it um, from a risk mitigation standpoint that I was actually losing money um, mm -hmm. being in the business, uh, being, being working in my job. And then the last thing was that I became friends with the, one of the co-founders and CEOs, uh, CEO of the, of the company that I was working at, incredible company, Intrepid Travel, one of mm -hmm. the largest uh, adventure travel companies in the world. And I never forget, I sat down with him at the cafe downstairs and I said, I think it's time. I think it's time that I go full time on this thing because he knew and he was really supportive of my journey. And he said, yeah, it probably is. And, you know, if it doesn't work out, you always got a job here, Nathan. <laughs> That's always a, a nice cushion to have, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So I think that's pretty special, Carl. Mm, so if, if you go back, cap, I've got the CEO of the company saying, I can always come back. I've got six, three to six months worth of cost of living savings. It was closer to six months got recurring revenue with predictability of the business. And then I've got more time that I can spend on the business, which is an opportunity cost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So founder grew, obviously. At some point, now I, I remember, I think it was correct that you did everything in those first six months. You, you did the, the marketing, the, the writing, the interview, you did everything. So at some yeah, point, yeah, yeah. when did you decide I need help? So at the start, um, there was one thing that I didn't do, and that was the design of the magazine. Um, I found an incredible designer um, to, to help with designing the magazine. 
And I still had writers. I had my mum helping me with copy editing or proofreading, et cetera. And yeah, after 12, 14 minutes, when I went full time, I, I got a copy editor. So I got a copy editor and I just found all these people off Upwork. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, it was me, Karan, the designer and Tate doing the copy editing for some time. Um, yeah, for, for quite some time. Um, so I'd say, yeah, I, I was getting help along the way. And the key takeaway there was I wasn't employing people full time. I was employing people on a contractual project basis. But then also I was I was looking at it from the sense of what am I procrastinating with? Mm -hmm. What am I bad at that I don't enjoy? Mm And it's actually better for me and the business if I get somebody else to do it on a contractual project basis. And that's an incredible unlock. You know, if you think of like life hacker time management, right? And this is how I'm kind of thinking about to help help the audience and, and the community is, is I think when you want to get ahead, Carl, sometimes there's just things you don't like doing, right? And when you want to build a business, things you hate, that you're really bad off and you dread it. And we all have these things. If you can afford it, find somebody on a contractual project basis and get them to do it. Yeah. And then you still focus on the things that you enjoy. Now, don't get me wrong. I still had to manage the finances of the business. Don't particularly enjoy it. Mm. But I had an accountant to look it over, right? right. Mm-hmm. Um, there were all sorts of things that I didn't enjoy that I hated, but it wasn't the dread. If there's the dread mm-hmm. that exists, you've got to find a way to push through it. If you can't, then you, you, you'll be at a standstill. Then if you can, outsource it, delegate it. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's the admin side and actually the finance side. I think the best thing I ever did was get an accountant. It's expensive because they're professional people, but it would, I mean, I did not want to be dealing with taxes and payroll. That's just not something I want to deal with. So my accountant deals with all that. Um, so I got a 20 minute touch point every month where I just have to put together my expenses and send that over. But you're right. I mean, there are jobs that we all have when we start our own business that we just hate doing. And it's a great one to delegate and move out. And actually that kind of like nicely leads me on to one of the things that I know, cause I'm reading a lot about businesses and how they grow is a new entrepreneurs. One of the biggest areas is going from the business operator, you know, when they're, you're doing everything to becoming a business owner where you kind of step back and see the bigger picture and deal with like, this is the direction we're going. And do you have any advice for people that really struggle with that? Because you've gone through that because I know you've got 50, 50 plus um, employees now. So at which point did you realize I have to step back from the operations side and become more of the owner side? Yeah, this has been an interesting transition, Carl. Um, I realized it when I was burnt out. That was mm-hmm. what, early last year. Um because I was still like, I still had leaders, but I was still heavy in the operations and I just burnt myself out Um, because I loved it. And I didn't realize that I was salvaging Um, over time. When you, when you start to, when you start to build a team, leadership becomes so incredibly critical. Mm -hmm. And there's things that people don't talk about. If you've never been a leader, like how do you rally? How do you inspire? How do you hold people to account? Mm. And these are just critical skills if you want to grow your business through that next stage where you have to basically influence outcomes through people and empower people to do their best work, all sorts of things where it's an interesting transition. So what my advice to people would be when they're looking to make that transition from kind of being in the operations to becoming, you know, proper CEO. And, and this is something that I'm still working through and, mm. and uh, it's, it's an interesting journey. It really comes down to like, what are you the best in the world at and how, how big do you want to build your business? Because if you, if you actually like being hands-on and, and quite on the tools and fairly hands-on, that's actually okay. Mm-hmm. But just know that you are limiting the growth of the business because there are people that are better than you at all sorts of different things and you can't be a master of every single trade. So it comes down to really what you want and what the goals are, what's the mission, what's the vision for the company, what's the purpose, and really um, how big do you want to build? Because if you want to build something of true worth and significance, businesses are built by people right? 
businesses are built by people and it's your job to go out if, if you want to build something really large and special that you have to find the best possible people you can and you you have to you know be, be a great leader that can lead them and do all these kind of things that i talked about so uh it's a tricky question carl because you just it comes down to that person's goals and what they want to achieve mm -hmm. and, and there's nothing wrong i want to be really clear there's nothing wrong with being a solopreneur mm -hmm. or, or solo operator or solo creator where you have just a few people Sometimes, to be honest, I think back to those times and that, that were pretty fun times, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, <you> know, <laughs> it's bootstrapping, isn't it? <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you know, we're, we're still bootstrapping now, but yeah, it's just different. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I think um, there, there's levels, right? Any, any any, of this stuff, there's levels. Like how can you eventually elevate from CEO to chairman if, if, if that's what you want to do, right? And you have a board yeah. and then you have yeah. a CEO and you're, you're running it all for you, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. It does, yeah. And so that that's kind of leads like the the delegating side, and it's like the letting go side. Do you did you find that easy, or was that a difficult part of that process? Hard. Certain mm. things, certain things easy. Certain mm. things easy, but some things hard. You know, like um, to to let go of podcasting in terms of like who does like you know who the people we choose or like you know i still kind of approve but like for the most part i'm empowering the team mm -hmm. um in the marketing right like i love doing the marketing <laughs> stuff but i've just kind of let it go right like mm -hmm. I, I still I'm there to inf I'm still there to help um you know finding the instructors right like this is something you know how do we find teachers how do we find people to give back on our platform all sorts of things so yeah certain things it was hard for sure there's certain things for a long time that I shouldn't have been doing and I was, was doing it and I was actually holding me and the business back. Right. Right. Yeah. So when it comes to delegating, do you, do you actively involve that now that's saying, right, can you do this? Can you do that? Or, or now do you have like a leadership team that's doing a lot of that for you? Yeah. So I have a leadership team that basically run the business. Right. Um, and you know, there's a still, you know, I, I, recently taken up product um we're kind of in between finding finding someone to, to lead product but um yeah i i you know i have a i have a, a really talented senior leadership team that effectively run the business and uh my main focus is is on driving the growth driving the driving the vision and leading and inspiring and and really kind of looking at the next 6 12 24 months ahead looking looking ahead of time right right so over the last 7 years um because you've you've gone from like solopreneur to like now managing a team. What have been the best lessons you've learned about getting things done? Because I know that one of the issues I have with, with many clients that I have is we are they have loads of ideas. I mean, fantastic at ideas, but actually getting them executed to completion has been the tough thing. And how have you managed to do that from when you were doing it personally to now when you're actually enroll, you're empowering people to do it for you? Yeah. It's about taking people on a journey. Mm -hmm. It's about having a clearly defined and articulated strategy. And it's also about focus as well. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, we've got our OKR planning session. Like um, OKRs is effectively a goal setting framework, but mm -hmm. it, it helps you operationalize your strategy and, and help you focus and dial things in. Um, that's still, we're still early though in OKRs and uh, it's been an interesting journey, uh, but I think really it comes down to getting things done and leading out, uh, influencing outcomes through people. It, it really comes down to making sure focus is key, making sure uh, de the definitions of what success looks like is key. Right, that is right. really key. And then really asking the right questions. You know, I think, I think it's easy to get caught up in just saying, go do this with it yes. as opposed to taking somebody on a journey and helping them discover themselves what is the what is the most important thing that they could be doing, empowering them, um, right. and really, yeah, I think, and it's not just that; it's it's the ability to hold someone to account, which is mm -hmm. tough, right? Like I'm yeah. naturally uh, someone that doesn't like confrontation, and I've really had to elevate and, and be comfortable with holding people to account, right? Because if people are not held to, held to account, and they just continue to not deliver, then, you know, things don't get done, right? Like, yeah. and these, these, these are, these are, this is leadership, right? This, is. That is leadership. Yeah. yeah. And actually, you, you, I think you touched on a very good, two good points there is like the, the empowerment and being clear with the communication. 
because I, I've, I've seen this in many, many companies where the communication is vague and nobody really knows what to do. And then there's the like, employees are a bit frightened to ask the, the leader, what do you mean? Because they don't want to come across as being stupid. So, I, I, yeah, it's a really good point there about the communication being very clear about what the objective is. Yeah. And look, there's all like, you know, we're still working on it, right, Carl? Like mm -hmm. we're getting there. But I think another key thing to think about when you think about uh, communication, making sure it's key is really, really coming down to that that strategy piece, right? Like making sure everybody knows where we're going, what we need to do, and what success looks like as a company, at a company level, but then also on a team level and an individual level, and having great, great leaders that that that, that can drive outcomes. Because, yeah, like getting things done it's not it's not good just like saying hey do this go do this go do this go do this because really you 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 don't want to be thinking for people right you want to empower them you want to give them ownership you want to give them autonomy you want to give them accountability right yeah. mm -hmm. and these are the things that they're just key leadership lessons that you just learn over time and i definitely have a master right but i'm learning <laughs> and uh, yeah i you know in an ideal world right mm -hmm. you have really capable people mm -hmm. where they know like what success looks like is clear mm -hmm. the vision mission strategy is clear and how they're contributing to that mm -hmm. and you just let them go yeah and you support guide coach and mentor and they're just doing it and they're getting it done and they're killing it like that's 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 ideally the dream scenario but it doesn't work that way because businesses are built by people and you have ups and downs and you have all yeah. sorts of things going on yeah buyers here and there and you know what i mean like that's yeah. business well you're dealing with humans you're not dealing with machines and humans are emotional beings and that, that uh, makes things difficult at times <laughs> i know <laughs> so as a as a leader you know as a leader of a growing business what tips have, could you give our listeners and viewers about improving the productivity of a team i think we touched on there the, the communication side and empowerment side but is there anything else that you've discovered maybe something that surprised you that about getting that team motivated to be able to produce the results that you know you have designed or that you want look the vision is important mm -hmm. but the learning how do we how do we encourage and foster an environment for continuous growth and learning Right. Um, and that's kind of something we're massive about at Founder. Like, mm -hmm. you know, we go and find people that have done it, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. we're just about to launch a program on TikTok ads and we've got somebody that spent just recently over a couple of million dollars profitably on TikTok ads, right? Mm -hmm. So if we've got a paid, uh, if we, you know, if you have someone in your team that's a paid advertising person or leader, it's in your best interest to go and enroll in that program and, and empower them to learn, to, to work in a while, right? Instead of you, Right. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so, so looking for people, I think in terms of productivity, you can move faster when you get shortcuts. Yes. And that's 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 yes. really really key in terms of productivity. If you can find people, it's not it's not the what, it's the who. Who right. has done it? Who has solved that problem already? And how can you help your team and and share with them people that have done it mm -hmm. and give them the blueprint? So that's why we're massive at Founder. Like. Yeah, we're, we're massive in, in in it's the who. We're massive in skilling up our team. We're massive in providing them resources, education, introducing them to people that have done it. Like, you right. know, we're looking at, at uh, look, relaunching our affiliate program. So I know somebody that um, launched the Shopify affiliate program that, that really built it out. So, you know, I've got a call lined up there. Like, it, mm -hmm. just, just it's never ending, right? But that's how I'm, I'm really trying to help my team is that, is this just that thirst for knowledge, continuous improvement, and really um, just just helping them learn, helping them right. learn, helping get their shortcuts, helping them find the who, not the what. Yes. And uh, yeah, yeah, I find that's a great one. So I think that must mean that you have a lot of inspired workers, be uh, employees, because they are they're learning on the job. They're th you're hiring them because of their expertise, so they feel empowered and have a they must have a massive sense of autonomy actually, because you're kind of saying, this is the direction now use your skills and find us, find the way to get there. Yeah. 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 And now don't get me wrong as a CEO, I'm, I'm checking in, I'm you know, driving, but yeah, I, I try and give people as much autonomy as possible while at the same time, 
you know, they have to be accountable. And I think that's really key. And Carl, I make no claim that I'm incredible at holding people to account. I'm getting better and better and better. But yes, that is that is what I, that's the kind of culture that I want to build, right? Like a, yeah, a values-led yeah. company culture, you know, our, our, our values are, uh, you know, crew, curious, relentless, and united. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I want to have a values-driven culture with, um, you know, people that have autonomy built on high, high amounts of trust, right? Mm -hmm. High amounts of trust uh, and a strong uh, sense where, People are empowered to do their best work, do cool shit at Founder, and uh, yeah, we win, and 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 they're accountable for the results. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this is a um, a question more aligned with the productivity side, which, but now that you've been running your own business, I think it's what eight, nine, ten years, ten years, isn't it? Now, yeah, two thousand twelve was when it started. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, kind of. Yeah, so coming close to ten years. Yeah, yeah. So what what have you? What's been the biggest time saver tip that you've learned over the last? say 10 years there's a there's a lot um i'd say automating your email automating the crap out of your email mm -hmm. and basically any any email that has unsubscribe in it goes in an unsubscribe folder and ah, uh, i like that i like that <laughs> Getting a, a really a great uh, executive assistant. Nothing beats that. Right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think that that's a really good tip. I hadn't thought of that one before, but any, because you can see, uh, pick up keywords, can't you, in email. So you can do a uh, a rule that anything, if you've got the word unsubscribe in it, goes into this folder. Yep. Yeah. I do like that. Problem. I used to get so many emails and my EA now chief of staff, she's like, what's up with your email? Right. And mm -hmm. she just, we just automated it all, set all these rules. And yeah, now, now I, I get inbox zero every week and mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know, maybe 40, 50 weeks in a row inbox zero. It's pretty awesome. Wow. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't treat other people's treat, treat email as other people's to do list because emails are massive yeah, yeah. time suck. Mm -hmm. Like as an owner or operator, or an entrepreneur, you get so many emails. You know, it's <laughs> crazy. I know, I know. It, it it's coming in all the time, and it's, it never stops. So yeah, but that's a really good tip. I hadn't thought of that one before. Now coming to the final question, which is at Life Hack, we believe that life is nothing without the time to live it. What is the one thing you will regret if you're not investing enough time in it, and why? Look, family's pretty important to me. And so I want to be able to invest as much time as I can with, with uh, family, friends, my parents. And uh, yeah, I think uh, that's pretty special. And then just living life, you know, you want to, you want to be able to live life, have fun. And, yeah. uh, you know, part of that is, is work, right. You know, for founder, it's, it's a lot of fun, but there's hard times too. Right. So yeah. getting that balance yeah. is always, always, always tricky, but yeah, I'd say, I'd say family, friends, that's important. Yeah. Um, it, it is. You're right. It is a trick, particularly when you're focused on growing a business, it's like, I, I tend to call this the entrepreneurial mind because it never stops. It never shuts down. There's always ideas coming at you all the time. And sometimes it's like, okay, let's stop. You know, we're, my wife and I have, a, we do a, we take our dog for a walk every evening because it's a bit hot in Korea at the moment. And that's our, our time because he does his own thing. He goes off sniffing, whatever. And uh, we can just talk. And there's no, we, our rule is no phones. So we get an hour every day of what I call quality time. And it's, because that way, it's the only way to shut my brain off uh, from thinking about work is to say, no phones, put that in the pocket. We'll take a picture if we need to. But yeah, it's it's scheduled. It's not really scheduled in the sense it's in the calendar, but we generally do it in the evening now. But you're right. It's family can often get pushed to one side when you're focused on growing a business. And um, it's important to bring that balance in. You're right. Well, thank you very much for joining us here today, Nathan. It's been a real pleasure talking with you. As mentioned in today's interview, prioritization and delegation is essential in order to make time to do what you want to do to help you develop these skills. Life Hacks Full Life Planner will give you the roadmap and planning tools needed to get the most out of your time. Full details of this planner are in the show notes below. Thanks again, and I look forward to seeing you in our next show.